The American prospect has obtained documents from APAC's annual policy conference that revealed the organization's lobbying strategies, which of course are extreme and overwhelmingly favor the interests of Israel over our own country. So let's get into what the documents say. And this is reporting by Luke Goldstein over at the American Prospect. And he says that the lobbying files promote the familiar though contested line that Israel does not target civilians, which <laughs> I mean, they accidentally. they've got terrible aim then if they're yeah. not targeting civilians considering the insanely high civilian death toll. Yeah, uh, I just one quick note here. These are the talking points that they're feeding the politicians that they have given campaign contributions that's right, to. That's right. So they're like, okay, now here's the money, but along with it comes talking points. You have to pretend that we accidentally killed 25,000 women and children. Like, oops, we meant to not kill them because we're angels, and the no good terrorists mean to kill them on purpose. We just are the world's worst military, a bunch of incompetent nincompoops. And so we just keep murdering and murdering women and children. Go tell everybody that. Hey, hey, Fetterman, bitch, go, go tell them that, right? Yeah. And Fetterman, of course, was in the audience going, yes, sir, yes, sir, where's the money, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, yes. And he's literally doing as they say as we speak. <laughs> so we'll get to that in a moment. But the other thing I wanted to just bring up, especially considering the claim that they're not, you know, targeting civilians. Remember the UN Relief and Works Agency, also known as UNRWA, had a facility near Rafa, and the IDF just attacked it. Five people so far that we're learning have died. Allegedly, there was a Hamas militant who also died. Hamas has confirmed it, so I think there's there's more evidence to back up that claim from the IDF. But UNRWA had also shared exactly where they were to with the IDF to ensure that they would be safe and that they wouldn't be shelled or bombed, and they were bombed anyway. So that was just one of the more recent examples. And then I'm sure when the so-called flower massacre happened, the IDF started shooting at Palestinians as they were trying to get some humanitarian aid in like near Northern Gaza where they've been overwhelmingly cut off from humanitarian aid and are starving to death. When the IDF was shooting at those people, they weren't targeting the civilians, right? Yeah, they shot at them from tanks and drones and pretended to be nervous about their welfare and health. Right. By the way, they never provided any evidence. There was a single IDF soldier that was in danger. And the drones have, are, of course, don't have people in them and the tanks are perfectly safe. I, but they massacred 112 people who were already starving and eating animal fodder. So to pretend that they are not killing people, innocent civilians on, on purpose, look, it's pretty little lies. You can pretend all you like and a bunch yeah. of the media and a bunch of the politicians pretend and partly because they get paid to pretend. But the rest of us aren't paid, we don't have to pretend. It's obvious that Israel is killing civilians on purpose. And it is definitely a massive act of terrorism. So a few more of the falsehoods that APAC is pushing in these documents that have been leaked to the American prospect. APAC is telling members of Congress that Israel is not, this one is so insane. APAC is telling members of Congress that Israel is not blocking the delivery of aid to Gaza. It's just a flat out lie. And that reports that people are starving in Gaza are false. These people are evil. They're, they're just evil, Jake. APAC is evil. Yeah, it's evil. Even the U.S. government, which is firmly on Israel's side no matter what, acknowledges that Israel is blocking humanitarian aid into the Gaza Strip. And not only do they acknowledge it, we're dropping aid in and and, and doing it so poorly, we accidentally killed a couple of people. They say that was an accident because we were trying to save their lives because our so-called ally is starving them to death, and now we're building a port off of the Gaza coast. Yes, because yeah. our so-called ally is starving. 576,000 people according to the UN right now, and they're starving them to death. Already 27 people have died of starvation yesterday, 23 of them are children. We've shown you the starving and the dead children before on previous shows. And these guys are gonna pretend to do all these things. But look, APAC- What is it like to, like how, how does it work? To you, to the point where you convince yourself, you you dehumanize human beings so effectively in your mind that you could literally see the images of them starving 
Okay, you can see the vi the video that we showed last week. I believe it was a CNN report of that little boy who died. Okay, starving to death. He's he starved to death. We all saw that image. How the hell does how do members of APAC see that? And they have convinced themselves that these people don't matter to the extent that they're dehumanized. They don't matter at all. How do they do it? How does that process work? Because I don't understand it. And well, that's why I say it's evil. That's yeah. why I say it's evil. That is evil. That is evil, Jenk. Yeah, no, no, I'm not disagreeing. So look, if <laughs> uh, those pictures looked very similar to the pictures that came out of the Holocaust. With Jews that were starving, that broke our hearts, the whole world. That's why Israel exists in the first place, because Jews needed a safe haven after this was done to them and they were brutalized. Now APAC turns around and goes, no, doing it as long as it's to Palestinians is perfectly fine. I'm sorry. So look, first of all, if you work at APAC, you're obviously a racist. And that's not even disputable because you make the argument that Palestinian lives are worthless. And you could slaughter them and butcher them all day long. And that that is that's perfectly kosher. Guys, I, I, I'm it's sorry. It's disgusting and definitely racist. I can't keep it together with this video. We showed it to you guys last week and I literally had to tell the, the crew to immediately go to Jank right when we get out of the video because I was sobbing and I just couldn't handle it. I didn't wanna have to go to the video again, but here it is. This is what we're talking about. How the hell do you see this and tell our politicians, tell the international community, you better deny this is happening. It's in fact, it's not happening. And these lives don't matter. That's essentially the message here. And John Fetterman, who ran as a freaking progressive, okay, is totally on board with what APAC is pushing out. So here's the video, here's what I'm talking about. Tiny limbs, bones protruding. The constant sound of crying from children now facing starvation in Gaza. In this overrun hospital ward, anxious mothers watch on as doctors provide whatever care they still can. But for some, there is nothing more to be done. She was healthy, there was nothing wrong with her before, Mila's mother says. Then suddenly, everything dropped. She wasn't eating anything, we had no milk, no eggs, nothing. She used to eat eggs every day before the war. But now we have nothing. Across Gaza, too many are feeling the pain of this deepening hunger crisis. Small children, emaciated and malnourished. These were little Yazan's final moments. His tiny fingers gripped in his mother's hand. He, like Mila, would not make it. And the monsters who work at APAC say that that's not happening, you shouldn't believe your lying eyes. You should believe their propaganda instead. But much worse, guys, are the legislators that are there. Because I get APAC's purpose. APAC is a right-wing, monstrous uh, lobbyist organization that works for a foreign government and wants to corrupt our politicians. So they say, "Oh no, we're technically getting money from Americans. But we are telling the politicians they must obey Israel. You must obey Israel. And so the Fettermans, the Schumers, by the way, the Mike Johnsons, all of the top Republican leadership and all of the top Democratic leadership, including Hakeem Jeffries, were all there. Leadership gave speeches kissing Israel's ass and saying, we swear our loyalty and allegiance to you. We will get, we will work for you instead of our own government. Where's the money? Where's the money? So don't tell me that these politicians aren't corrupt. And if you're a Democrat, don't tell me that only the Republicans are corrupt, but that Schumer and Jeffries and Fetterman are angels. And that when they take money from Israel and they help to slaughter these children, that somehow they're angels? No, they're just as corrupt. And if you're MAGA, you think the Republicans aren't corrupt? Every Republican is super happy to take that money and they wanna send more money to Israel than the Democrats do. And Trump says about the Palestinians, he sees a video like that and he says, finish them. That's what he thinks Israel should do. So monsters all around, you're supposed to work for our citizens, not someone else's. All right, and if you are a loyalist to Israel, regardless of what it does, Still not good enough if you just try to tweak them a little bit rhetorically because during this conference, 
AIPAC was apparently very, very upset with Benjamin, not Benjamin, with Joe Biden and his critique. Again, rhetorical, totally rhetorical, never backed up by any action, but his critique of Benjamin Netanyahu. So let's get to the next graphic. AIPAC dedicates an entire section of its file for members to rebuke the president's comments under the subhead. Why is President Biden dictating to Israel how to fight this war while simultaneously demanding military assistance from his government? Let me just pause right there. If Israel wants to carry out war crimes, they shouldn't do it with our money. That you can't on one hand demand that American taxpayers who are desperate for a better life here in America. They need to hand over billions of dollars to the Israeli government and the IDF. And we need to shut the F up about any of our critique. AIPAC is evil, AIPAC is evil, evil. My fellow Americans, are you okay with that? Are you okay with a lobbying group representing the best interests of a foreign government telling you you need to bust your ass every day, work a job that you likely hate, and have a portion of your earnings taken from you by our federal government and funneled to the Israeli government so they can commit atrocities in the Gaza Strip. Are you okay with that? Because I'm not okay with that. And nothing gets under my skin more, okay, than hearing these pieces of crap say things that make it clear that they're they feel entitled to our money. Entitled. Entitled. That that gets under my skin more than you guys understand, okay? And, and 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 as they are saying, we demand that you give us four billion a year. We demand that you give us an extra fourteen billion dollars, and we're not going to stop slaughtering these people. We're going to pretend that we're not even slaughtering them. And your job is to be our servants, U.S. congressmen and U.S. senators and, and American people. It's our money. It's our money. But the problem is the corrupt politicians who take our money. Give it to Israel, why? Because they got paid by AIPAC. Look, we're gonna tell you something that you never hear in mainstream media, you barely ever hear in right wing media. These campaign contributions are bribes. They're obvious bribes to everyone. I know the Supreme Court legalized them, but they are definitely given money to these politicians so they can get reelected, keep their power, fame, money, etc. And so that all of these, every single politician that takes money from AIPAC is being bribed. Now that's also true when they take money from Qatar or Saudi Arabia through all other organizations of Americans who happen to really like Qatar, etc. It's true of all the governments. It's also true when they take money from ExxonMobil and Raytheon. But these sons of bitch corrupt politicians, they don't work for us at all. They get their bribes and they work for the people who bribed them. So APAC is saying to this Collect and a collection of the most powerful politicians in America. We own you. We are, we just bribed you, so you will do exactly as you're told, and you're not even allowed to complain. So shut up and give us the taxpayers' money. And our bought, intensely corrupt criminal politicians go, yes, sir, of course, sir. Who else would you like me to rob and give you the money? So just like they do for the bankers, for the oil companies, for the drug companies, our politicians, almost all of them are criminals. If you see someone has taken money from APAC, you should never ever vote for them. It advises members to say concerns about the conduct of the war against Hamas are best delivered privately. And public statements that show divergence are unhelpful and can embolden Hamas and Iran. I can't think of a group of people who are more emboldened to commit war crimes than the IDF. I just, the, the idea that they're gonna take the money and no one should be able to criticize the people funding the war, the American people and the United States president funding the war. Don't criticize, don't criticize regardless of what Netanyahu decides to do, regardless of what the IDF decides to do, regardless of how many children you yourself witness in these videos getting slaughtered or wasting away due to malnutrition and dehydration that has been brought forth by the blockage of humanitarian aid into Gaza by the Israeli government. That is what's happening right now, that is the reality. And as hard as AIPAC wants to fight the reality of the situation and gaslight the American people about what's really happening on the ground there, we all see it.
We all see it. I get that you know the IDF has been very effective in killing literally hundreds of journalists, but there are still brave people in Gaza who are trying to get the information to the international community. We see it, we see it with our own eyes. And good job to CNN for doing that report. So more people can see what's happening on the ground there. And great job to Luke Goldstein, by the way, who got this leaked memo from APAC and ran it at the American Prospect. Great job by David Dane, who's the editor there. I've gotta read you three last graphics here. Uh, graphic seven, they explain that they're looking, APAC is looking to broaden the war and make America fight a giant war in the Middle East uh, on their behalf. Of course. Other than military funding for Israel, main piece of legislation APAC is supporting, uh, both entails stronger actions to cut Iran off from the global economy. Those are the Iranian Sanctions Enforcement Act and the SHIP Act, which would crack down on any foreign ports and refineries that process petroleum exported from Iran in violation of existing US sanctions. First of all, Israel should have US sanctions, let alone getting US aid, which is outrageous. But bottom line here, and they have a lot more detail in the article, and you should definitely read it. We'll put a link in the description box for you guys. Excellent journalism. Um, is that APAC is trying to agitate for America to start a war with Iran and to fight that war on their behalf, which of course is going to take billions, it might take trillions of dollars, and it'll cost a lot of American lives. But these politicians got money. So, okay, which leads me to the last two quotes. Uh, graphic eight here, the PAC touted its prowess to members as quote, dollar for dollar, the largest contributor to candidates in the 2022 midterm elections via its super PAC United Democracy Project. There they are saying to the legislators, remember who your boss is. We fund you more than any other PAC. So you will serve us. So who was there? Graphic 10, according to an incom incomplete speaker list, so there's a lot more than this. The entire Democratic and Republican leadership in Congress delivered remarks. Senators Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell and Representatives Hakeem Jeffries and Mike Johnson. Senator John Fetterman and Representative Tim Burchett were both in attendance among other representatives. So that is the entire leadership of the Republican and Democratic parties, all there to serve APAC and not the voters, and that is American politics.